I gotta tell you about this one. You see, we had a group called Simba, it was our, 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 our political, whatever, it was a group, you know, student group. And, uh, and we had a little cadre, I believe we were revolutionary selves, to be quite frank. There were six of us, three, three, three boys, three girls, well, we were young, 17, 18, or 18 at the time. And, uh, and uh, we studied. We were like the brain, the brain trust of the larger group Simba, you see. And we studied, we studied like Nkrumba, you know, Little Black Book, and we studied like, 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 like Che and, 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 and Mao, and Little Red Book, you know, we studied all the revolutionary and phenomenon, you know, we, we, we were serious, you know, because we some revolutionary things, what we thought was right, what we was, you know, we were serious. So what happened, though, was when we took over the school, all of a sudden, we who was down there, you know, because we had been mentored by this, these two brothers, Bob and Billy Shepard, who had been in Vietnam, they was telling us all about this stuff. Because about that time, right, actually before they came, one of those untold stories is that the Viet Cong, what they would do, they would get close to the American camps, and they'd be yelling to the brothers, saying, why are you fighting here with us? You gotta fight at home. They don't respect you at home. Ooh, that was heavy enough. They don't talk about that. But that's what, and I think that Bobby and Billy, you know, they, they came out of that kind of thing. And they was teaching us, no more teaching us, they was with us. And uh, when we took over the school, all of us, all of us people in the country, we had to take positions of responsibility because you know, there was some leadership there. And so what we did, well, I was in charge of, guess what? I was in charge of, um, strangely enough, the, there was a telephone, you know, old telephone thing where you stick the telephone in, you know, and you talk to people and say, okay, you connect them to the right thing. Well, I was in charge of that section there, you know, and uh, so I told him, look, here's what we do. When you answer the phone, you say, this is Bronx Community College. This school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. And he unplugged the thing. Mm -hmm. If I had to say the same thing, Bronx Community College, this school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. While we negotiate with the, you know, the powers that be, was trying to negotiate for a bit more black studies and you know, all that kind of thing. Now, one, one, one time we had this white guy and he was cursing. I said, no, 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 we don't do that here. I had to kick him out. See, that's leadership. You know, I don't know what kind of leadership. I mean, my, my whole point really is that with all this drama and everything like that, leadership is leadership. Whether you're young, old, or whatever happened, you got to provide some leadership. You can't just, oh, they did this in the future, in the past, and then you, you, you don't update or you don't, you know. I'm not criticizing what's going on today. I'm just saying I don't know if people are really thinking and being leaders. But, but that's just me, I'm, you know, I'm just one of these dispatches from the arts director emeritus, of the, that would be me, T, from the Pattersons. I used to, well, I'm still a cultural revolutionary, but I'm not really a revolutionary, I'm more of an evolutionary. I'm letting you know what I only suspect.